All right, in this video we're going to talk about right-handed, left-handed limits. Okay, so kind of an introduction to the topic. Um, there's really two ways to talk about limits, or at least to define them. One's a formal definition that you've probably seen, epsilon, uh, delta epsilon. And then there's kind of an easier way to talk about it, which is how I'm going to introduce the topic here. Okay, so really in this, in this strange looking graph, I'm going to talk about a few x values that we're interested in. What the limit is as x approaches these particular values, x equals 0 and x equals 1, 2, 3. That's what we're interested in what's happening, okay? So let's look at this first point. As x approaches 0, what's going on? I got a right-handed limit, a left-handed limit, and then the limit itself. I want to answer these three questions. Find the limit of this function as x approaches 0 from the right. Find the limit of this function as x approaches 0 from the left. Find the limit of this function as x approaches 0 just zero. Okay. All right, so if I have a graph, then I'm just looking at the graph. That's the method. I don't have what these functions are, the rules for these functions. Um, it would be, I guess, piecewise defined if I did, but I'm just looking at the graph and I'm asked to find these answers by looking at the graph to kind of help understand what a limit is. Okay. So what is the limit as x approaches zero from the right? Okay, well here's x equals zero, the y-axis, and as x approaches from the right, you should be asking yourself, what does y get really close to? Or what does the function value get really close to or arbitrarily close to? So just kind of follow your function values, right? As x approaches 0, where's y? y is getting really close to the y value right here. That's negative 2. Right? That's it. f of, f of 0 doesn't equal negative 2, right? But if you come in from this side, you get very close to negative 2. That's the limit. Okay. What about from the other side? As you get really close to zero from the left, right, from the left, then where does the function go? Well, you can see it. Just, just really look at it. Follow it down. As x gets close to zero, as you move into zero, where does the function go? It goes down here. And that's negative three. Right? So from one way, you have the limit at negative two, right, coming in from this side. From the other way, you have the limit at negative 3, so that should tell everybody something about the limit itself. It doesn't exist, right? If the right hand and the left hand don't match up, then the limit itself doesn't exist, okay, as x approaches 0. Um, another note to make here um, would be what is the actual value there, right? What is f of negative? That's old stuff. f of negative 3, that's if I, I'm sorry, I want 0 gave you the answer. What is f of 0? If I plug in 0 to this function, there's my output because it's filled in circle, would give me negative 3. All right. Uh, so that's another way to explain why the, the limit does not exist, because this output would have to be the same as both limits, All right. or the limits would have to match up. Okay. So let's look at this other, this other interesting point, that is the value of 3, that is as x approaches 3, a little bit different than as x approaches 0. Okay, so we want to approach 3 from the right, we want to approach 3 from the left, and we want to just approach 3 from both sides. Okay, so the question is what's the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the right? Well, I'm up here, right? I mean, here's your output down here. But as I approach 3, the concept of limit is what does the function get really close to as x gets really close to 3 from the right? Well, it's up here at 2. Okay. What about from the other side? Well, as f of x approaches, as x approaches 3 from the left, so here's x equals 3, here's your function. Function's up here, right? So as you approach from the other side, the left, you're up here at 2. Okay, and the function itself is down here, right? But that doesn't matter because the limit is up here. As x approaches from this side, it's up here too. As x approaches from this side, it's up here too. Okay, so that means the limit of f of x as x approaches 3, since the right-handed limit and the left-handed limit, then this limit is also 2. Okay, as long as the right-handed equals the left-handed limit, it's also 2. Uh, con continuity is a topic we talk about a lot. This isn't continuous at x equals 3, 
because the function at f of 3 is different than the limit. Okay, so I didn't talk a lot about continuity. Uh, I referred to it a little bit in the last example. But this wouldn't be continuous, and here's why. What's f of 3? Well, plug in 3, you get an output right here, that filled in circle. That's done it. The y value is 0. Okay, so the limit as x approaches 3 is up here, from the right, from the left, from both sides. The limit's 2. All right, but the function's down here at 0. Okay, so we got right hand limit, left hand limit, a limit, overall limit does exist, it's equal to 2. Uh, but because of this, this isn't 2, then it wouldn't be continuous. For that particular value of x, x equals 3. Okay, and the reason being, f of 3 doesn't equal the limit as x approaches 3. Okay, hope that helps understand limits a little bit more. Good luck.